Okay, so how is everyone today? Hey, Any questions about the mathematics or the programming? Questions about it? Everything going good? Okay, good. So the first announcement is that uh, I'm going to extend. There were some things that were due on two days ago uh, on the 6th. 6th? Yeah. And I'm going to extend those due dates uh, one week until uh, two, whatever, the 13th, I guess. Uh, the reason is because uh, I made some changes to my grading software, and probably all of you are receiving a bunch of messages saying uh, something, something. So, that's good. Any questions before we get to new math? Yes? Uh, whichever ones were due Tuesday night, two, two days ago. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, how the computation occurs on the machine uh, and try and get an idea of what's, what's actually happening. Okay, so let's remember uh, the following. So there's a, a math function called factorial. Uh, so for example, uh, it could be written this way. And that's pronounced uh, five, right? That's how you say that. <laughs> that's how you say that out loud. <laughs> no, that right? That's five uh, factorial. Uh, and how do you compute 5 factorial? One times two times three right. So, uh, so we all know that it is uh, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you, you know that from, from previous experience. Uh, but let's uh, remember the definition of factorial. Uh, the factorial function, so the factorial, uh, has signature what? What kind of input does it take? A natural input. And what kind of thing does it produce? A natural. So it's naturals to naturals. And its definition is that n factorial uh, has a piecewise definition. So what's the, what's the base case, the exit clause? When n is 0. And what is the definition of zero factorial? One. So this is the first clause. And uh, just as a comment about what this clause means, this is a consequence of the definition that zero factorial is defined to be one. OK, then what's the recursive clause? So n times n minus 1, this is nearly it, factorial, right? So this n minus 1 uh, has factorial, and so this is uh, otherwise. <clears throat> okay, so then using this, uh, for example, 
we could say, uh, well, let's compute five factorial and let's do it using the definition. Not our previous knowledge. We know it's five, five, five times four times three times two times one. We already know that. Uh, <coughs> we want to uh, do it using just the definition. So if we want to evaluate five factorial, then uh, what clause is, do we need to use right now? Clause two. And clause two is saying that this is equal to what? Five times right, so five times four factorial. So that's what clause two is saying. So this five is finished. We don't need to do anything with it, but we still have four factorial, which means that there's more work to do on the four factorial. So to do the four factorial, which clause do we need? Two. two. So this would be uh, five times what? Four times three factorial. And now I'm just going to do the rest of it quick because I suspect it's obvious because we've done so many things like this. So again, we'll use the second clause. Uh, five times four times three times two factorial. Again, we'll use the second clause. Five times four times three times two times one factorial. Uh, again, we'll use the second clause. Five times four times three times two times one times zero factorial. And now finally what? Now finally we use the first clause. Five times four times three times two times uh, one times one. And notice that the factorial is gone, so there's no more work to do. So in a sense, now we can finally multiply these all together. Okay, so any question about uh, this? Okay, so now let's <coughs> write uh, a, a uh, straightforward uh, MATLAB implementation. Yes, you have a question? Oh, you're just stretching, okay. Uh, so let's, let's do a, a MATLAB uh, implementation of this. So, uh, we're going to do this. in MATLAB. Well, uh, of course, this is, this is math notation, in and then an exclamation point after it. And you can't, you can't do that in MATLAB. We have to actually give it a name. And we're not going to give it uh, the name factorial because, <coughs> well, MATLAB has, <laughs> MATLAB has a function called factorial. Uh, so what do you want to call it? How about just F? Since it's not really so relevant. So we'll call it F, big F. So as a result, what, what name of file must we put this in? F.m. So here's the contents, contents of the file uh, big F dot little m. So uh, what's the first word? Function. I'll name the output m. Function's name is big F. I'll name the input n. I'll put some nice uh, comment here. Wait, which way does a percent go? Percent, like this. So, you know, you do something nice there. And now let's uh, write what we need to write. So what do we need to write to get this to work in MATLAB? But 
and we're going to assume that that the input is natural. We're not going to worry about any errors and none of that. Not here. So what do we need to do? If. So if what? N is equal to zero. Okay. So I'm going to write something that's probably clear to all of you, uh, but I want to make sure that it is, uh, if not already clear, clear now. So I've made kind of a subtle error. So if n equals zero, then what did we want to do? Then m is one. Semicolon. Then what? Else. Else what? M equal what? Very good. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to split this into two different uh, two different lines. I'm going to say this is K. Uh, K is F of N minus 1. And supposing I do that, then I can write M is equal to what? N times K, right? Uh, the reason why I did that, of course, no, you, could, you could get a working version of this by just saying n times f of n minus 1. But I'm putting the k there for a reason that will be clear in a minute. Okay, now what? N. That, that ends the if, right? And now what? an end to end the function. Okay, now there's something subtly wrong here. Uh, right here, right? So, so just as an aside, not part of the text of this function, this is just a reminder that the statement uh, n equals zero, that means Uh, assign to variable named n the value zero. So that's an assignment. But that's not what we want uh, on this if. We don't want to assign n to be 0, we want to check if n is equivalent to 0. So n equal equal 0 <coughs> means uh, determine if the value, determine if the value of variable named n is equivalent to zero. <coughs> and so those are different different matters. So uh, I'll write another equal there. <coughs> Any question about this? Ah, okay, so then this, so uh, we're going to continue this thought in a second, but right now I'm going to make an aside. So, um, for example, we, uh, you know, one of the tasks, one of the programming tasks that we have is to make a function is r. Uh, it, in, in, that, in, in that case, r means real. So when, when you use a function that returns a, a, a logical value, a true or false, then you should use it in the following way. So if uh, 
is r of x. And then you do some stuff, whatever it is that you do, and then end. So, so this is the this is the correct way, the, cor the correct style. So s some of you uh, did did something like this. You said uh, if. is r of x equivalent true or variations on this and whatever you did in there <clears throat> and so uh, so this is this is bad style because well is r returns true or false Returns true or false, so this is uh, this is bad style. And similarly, if you're concerned if x isn't real, then the proper style for well, some of you when you were concerned if x was not real. Uh, you wrote it like this, if is real, x equivalent false, which would mean that x is not real. So some of you wrote it this way, but this is bad style. What's the correct style? Right. So. You use tilde, which is the logical negation. So if not is real, x, do your thing, end. <clears throat> yes? Why is the other one bad style? Well, So there, there's a degree of arbitrariness to it, which is to say, which is to say that um, are these are these two things functionally equivalent? They are functionally equivalent. They are. And are the is are these two things functionally equivalent? Yes, they are functionally equivalent. In fact, uh, but it's sort of like. Uh, how do I want to explain it? So a lot of y'all are probably going to have to take technical writing of some kind. Like you got to have to take a technical writing class. And uh, in the technical writing class, when you submit your papers, you have to follow the style guide. Uh, it's the same kind of thing here. Uh, like, uh, for example, it's possible to speak without using any uh, pronouns whatsoever. He, she, it, that. You could always refer to things by their name with no pronouns, but that's bad style. It's that kind of thing. Did I answer it? it yes, it's just, it's just style. It's nothing. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, so we were talking about this uh, factorial, and let's let's. Um, Let's by hand evaluate uh, this function. And let's try and, and get a mental model for what MATLAB is doing when, when you request it to evaluate that function. OK. So suppose we're at the uh, command prompt, the command console. And just to make our lives a little bit easier, I'm going to ask it to evaluate uh, 3 instead of 5, because I think it'll be obvious uh, what's happening here. <clears throat> so suppose we ask it to evaluate uh, f, big F of 3, where f is this function we just wrote up here. 
Well, MATLAB does a lot of things that I'm not going to write down, but among other things, it, it looks up, do I know what big F is? Uh, and presumably we're in the directory where F, big F.m is located, and then MATLAB says, oh, they must be talking about that. Okay, so then, so then MATLAB looks up the contents of this function and says, all right, I can see that in this function, it has one input variable named n, it has one output variable named m, and it has one intermediate variable named k. So in order to evaluate this function, it will be necessary for me to make slots for three variables, m, n, and k. So MATLAB uh, does this, and you can conceptually think of it like a table. So I'll make these slots, m, n, and k. <coughs> So uh, only one of these variables currently has a known value. Which one has a known value? N has a known value, and what's its value? Three. Three. But at the present time, M and K do not uh, have known values. Okay. So if N is known to be three, and we're right here, the first thing we're going to check is, is it the case that n is, uh, that 3 is equivalent to 0? No, that's false. As a result, this will not be executed. Uh, so then we'll go to the else, and we will, we will enter the else block because else is always entered into, supposing that what preceded was not entered into. So the first thing we do is we define, uh, we're going to define a value for k. So we're going to figure out what k is. Uh, however, in order to evaluate k, what do we need to do? Right. So this table right here is a request to evaluate f of 3. But before we evaluate f of 3, what do we need to do? We have to evaluate f of 2. So MATLAB says, oh, OK, do I know what big F is? And then it looks in the directory and says, yeah, I know what big F is. And it makes another table. Says, OK. It makes a table with three variables because it analyzes the function and says, oh, it's got an output named M. It's got an input named N. And it's got an intermediate variable named K. <coughs> All right. So this is the evaluation for f of 2. The one above it can't complete until this one completes. So for the evaluation f of 2, which of the variables is known and what are the values? n is known to be 2, and none of the others are known. OK. So, so to be clear. We had to make this table right here because we were trying to figure out the value of k. So as a result of trying to figure out the value of k, we're evaluating f of 2. OK. So now we're in f of 2, and n is 2, and we're going to ask ourselves, well, is it the case that 2 is equivalent to 0? It is not the case, so we will not do that. Uh, rather, we'll do this, which is to say we want to figure out uh, the value of k. All right. Well, what is k then? So it'll be f of 1, right? So, okay, f of 1. Uh, MATLAB looks up, do I know what big F is? And it says, oh, yeah, I know what big F is. They're asking me to evaluate big F at 1. After analyzing 
big F, I can see that it has one input variable, one output variable, and one intermediate variable. So MATLAB responds by making a table with the values M, N, and K. So for this table, for this table, um, what variables are known? Just n. And it is known to be what? One. Okay, and no other variables are known. So we're going to start execution and we're going to ask what question are we going to ask? Is one equivalent to zero? Well, is it? No. It is not. <laughs> this is boring, isn't it? Of course it is. Uh, but, um, I want to stress to you that uh, this is exactly what MATLAB is doing. Right? It's not doing anything clever, it's just doing these things, these tedious, boring things, and it's doing them extremely quickly. Uh, okay, so one is not equivalent to zero. As a result, we're going to enter the second clause, and we're going to define a value for k. So how, do we, how will we do that? By, call, by, by calling f of zero. We're saying, so MATLAB is saying, oh, they want me to do f of zero. Okay. And then MATLAB asks, do I know what big F is? Oh, it's a function. All right. And after analyzing the function, I can see that it has one input variable, one output variable, and one intermediate variable. M, N, and K. Of these variables, which, which of them have known values? N does. And what's its known value? Zero. All right. Uh, so now, now that we've set up the table, the execution of the function will begin. So we come to here, and what's the question that we ask? Is zero equivalent to zero? Ah, it is. As a result, we're going to execute this one. And that gives, that gives m a value for the first time among all these tables. Notice that none of the other tables have a value for m. Uh, and what is the value for m? 1. OK, and then uh, nothing else occurs in this function. And because the output variable, because the output variable is named m, that means that now this m, which is the output of f of zero, gets taken back to here, to the to the k variable. <clears throat> so k now has a value in in the f of one table. What's k's value in the f of 1 table? It's 1. So now we're in f of 1. And what line are we on in f of 1? Right, we just finished executing this line. We just finished executing f of 0. So now n and k both have values, and we're going to use n and k to compute what? M. M. So m will get the value 1 times 1, because that's n times uh, k. So one, time, so 1 times 1 is 1. And now the the uh, execution of f, is one, f uh, of f of 1 is complete. Now what will occur? Right, this function returns, and it returns its output variable m. But the person who, the, the, the person who called, if you like, person, the person who called f of 1 was, was who? f of 2 called f of 1. And what is the name? that of the output that 
f of uh, that we're going to assign to the to f of one. K, right? So its its name is K in this table. So we have two and one. So now uh, we're we're evaluating f of two. And which line are we on in f of two? Right, we just finished this line, and now we're going to execute this line. Okay, so that means that now we're going to have a value for m. Right, because, because inside of f of 2, we have a value for n and also a value for k. All right, so then what is the value of m? 2, because it, m is n times k. So this will be 2, 2, 1. <coughs> So now the execution of f of 2 is complete. And it returns its value to the caller. Now who called f of 2? f of 3 called f of 2. So this gets returned. This output of f of 2 gets returned back to f of 3. But remember that what was the name in, in the f of 3 execution, what was the name that we gave to the output of f of 2? It was k. So this m becomes that k. So this is 3. This is 2. Uh, and then now we're back in the execution of f of 3. And what line are we on? Yeah, we just finished that one. f of 2 just came back. So we have a value of for n and k. So now we can compute m, which is the product of those two. So what's m? 6. And this is 3. And this is 2. So now the execution of f of, of, f of 3 is complete. And f of 3 <laughs> returns to the caller. Is that yours? But who called f of 3? We did, right, at the command line. So the value of m equals 6 is returned to here. And then MATLAB says a and s equals 6. Right? So it does all of this. Every time, uh, conceptually, a function returns, you can go with the imagination that the table it was using to, to carry out the computation is destroyed. So like as soon as this one is finished, it returns the value to the caller, and then this is destroyed. And then as soon as this one is finished, it returns the value to the caller, and this one is destroyed. This one gets finished, returns the value to the caller. This one is destroyed. This one gets finished, returns the value to the, to the console. This one is destroyed. Does anyone know the name of this conceptual model that we're writing here? Sorry? I couldn't hear it? Uh, I said inhumane. Inhumane, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's probably right. Uh, this, this is called a call stack. So this was for f of uh, 3, right? Imagine if we had requested f of 33. Wouldn't it be really exciting to write that all out? No, it wouldn't be exciting. But that's what MATLAB does, and it does this exceedingly quick. OK, so now I want you to consider a slightly, uh, a slightly different um, way to write a MATLAB function that does this. Uh, it does the same, it, it, it computes the same values, but does it in a different way. So this is an alternative. Alternative. Uh, implementation. Of 
factorial. Okay, so this alternative uh, implementation is going to use, uh, in fact, two functions. We're going to have to do two of them. We'll call it g, uh, and something else. So g and g0. So here's the contents. Mm, in fact, let's do it. Let's do the math implementation of it first, since I think it may, may help for you to look at it that way. So here's two different math functions. Uh, g of n, and we want this to be factorial, right, to, be, to be equivalent to the factorial function. g of n uh, is defined as uh, g0, so uh, g0, I guess with a subscript, of n and 1. So we have two functions, g and g0, and the implementation won't be complete until we define what g0 is, right? So we've got to know, we've got to know what g0 is. So and g0 of n and m is equal to the following. So it's equal to m when n is equal to 0. It's equal to m when n is 0. And it is equal to g0 of n minus 1 and m times n as a times <clears throat> otherwise. Okay, and again, the signature is naturals to naturals and we're ignoring folks who are going to try to plug bananas into our function that can only take naturals. Uh, so let's, let's evaluate this. So suppose that g of 4 is requested. Well, what is g of 4 defined as? Very good. So it's defined as g naught of 4 and 1. OK. Well, then, what's g naught of 4 and 1? We'll have to use class 2. OK. We'll have to use clause 2, which, is, which results in another call to G0. Uh, what are the first and second arguments? And 4. <clears throat> so, and I'm going to write it as, uh, just to be complicated, I'm going to write it as uh, 4 times 1. Because it was originally a 1, and then it, and then it was 4 times 1. Okay, so to evaluate... Uh, this one, which clause will we need? We'll need clause 2 again. So it'll be G0 of... Uh, so what are the arguments going to be? 2 and? Very good. And because it's multiplying on the left, it, it doesn't matter, but uh, I'm going to write 3 times 4 times 1 because the multiplication is occurring on the left. Of course, it, among the naturals, multiplication commutes. OK, then we'll need to do clause 2 again. So this would be g0 
what will the new arguments be? 1 and right 2 times 3 times 4 times 1. <clears throat> we'll need to use clause 2 again. So this will be G0, and what will the arguments be? 0 and, very good. And finally, what? Now clause 1, finally. Uh, it says that in the case uh, that the first argument is zero, the answer is the second argument, uh, which is one times two times three times four times one. So is that really four factorial? Yes. It is. It is. So this is, a, this is an alternative way to, to, uh, to implement this. All right. So now let's write, uh, write these in MATLAB literally on the page. So in, in MATLAB, so suppose that, uh, well, it is just called G. So this would be function uh, I don't know, K is equal to big G of n, and then what do we write? No ifs, actually, because this is g. Well, so because we're defining, it, it's going to take exactly one line. Because the name of the output is k, that means we need to write in here k equal something or other. So k equal what? Mm -hmm. uh, but because MATLAB doesn't have subscripts, I'll just write it as g, and that's a 0. g0 of what? N in one, <laughs> semicolon. So that function's pretty easy, right? That's just like one line. Uh, but to make it work right, we'll also need to define the function uh, g0. So function uh, we'll say k. It doesn't matter. K equal G zero of uh, N and M. So now what do we need to do? If So if what? <clears throat> if n equivalent zero, then then what? Then k is m. Right? Because it's saying if the first if the first argument, if the first input argument is zero, then the answer is the second input argument. That's the answer. Okay? Now what? Else. Else what? K equal. 
G0 of what arguments? Yeah, n minus 1 and n times m. Uh, asterisk, right? That's how you write it in MATLAB. End the conditional, end the function. Okay. Any question about this? This is okay. <clears throat> All right. So now what we're going to do is we have two different uh, implementations of the factorial function. One of them uses just the one function that we called big F. <clears throat> and the other one uses two different functions, which we called big G and big G0. We're, gonna, we're going to use uh, MATLAB. We're going to do the exact same kind of thing. We're going to make a call stack, but now we're going to use G and G0. Uh, well, so you could, it is possible to do it, uh, this one in a function g.m and this one in a function g0.m. That, that would work. And that's what I'm going to request that you do uh, in this exercise. But in a future exercise, we'll see that uh, in a function named g.m, the very first function that you implement has to be named g. But after that function is implemented, you can start writing other functions. And they can have whatever name that you wish. Uh, okay. So suppose uh, at the command console, we now request the following. We say, all right, MATLAB, I want you to do g of 3. Okay, well, MATLAB does some of its internal magic, more or less first asking, do I know what big G is? It seems like they're asking about a function. And then it looks, it looks on the hard disk and says, oh, I see a file named g.m. That's probably what they're talking about. So then it analyzes the contents of the function in file g.m and says, oh, uh, there's one input argument and one output argument. So it makes a table for G, and how many columns are in this table? Two, right? One for N, the input, and one for K, the output. And there's no intermediate variables. Okay, so it makes a table. Okay. N. <coughs> And uh, at the present time, which of these has a value? N has a value. And it is known to be 3. And this function, in a sense, wants, of course it's bad to anthropomorphize things too much, wants to make a value for k. So to make a value for k, what's going to happen? Right, we're going to call uh, G0 of, with, with two arguments. And so, you say, so MATLAB says, oh, G0, I need to look that up. Okay, well, it does that. Looks up G0, and the arguments that are going to be given to it are what? Yes, but what are their specific values? Three. One. Okay, so then MATLAB looks at the contents of function G0 and notices how many, how many columns are going to be necessary. Three, because there's two inputs and one output. So it, so it says, okay, I will do that. K, uh, N, and M. Now, of these variables, which of them have known values, and what are their values? We know n and m. And what are their values? 3 and 1. 
Okay, so then we're here. K is unknown, obviously, because we're trying to make it. Uh, N and M are 3 and 1, respectively. So the first thing that's going to be asked is, is it the case that 3 is equivalent to 0? That is not the case. Uh, as a result, we'll not use the first clause, we'll use the second clause. Uh, and to evaluate the second clause requires an evaluation of the G0 function. So now G0 is going to be called again. With what arguments? 2 and 3. And then MATLAB analyzes the contents of the function G0, notices that there, are, there is one output and two inputs, and as a result, makes a table containing three columns, K, N, and M. Of these three variables, two of them currently have a known value. They are N and M, and their values are 2 and 3. Is there any question about that? So now we enter into G0 of 2 and 3. Uh, and the first thing that we ask is what? Is it the case that 2 is equivalent to 0? It is not the case. As a result, because right now we're on this table, uh, as a result, we're not going to execute the first clause, we'll execute the second clause. Well, the execution of the second clause is, is yet another call to G0. Okay, so we need to make another table. We're going to call G0, and what arguments are we going to call it with? 1 and 6. 1, because the first argument is being decremented. And six, because the second argument is the product of the two input arguments. So this is two and three. The product of those is six. So here's six. MATLAB looks up the function G0, analyzes it, and determines, oh, there is one output variable and two input variables. So I will make a table with three columns, k, n, and M. Of these three variables, two of them presently have a known value. Which two? One and six. N and M, and their values are 1 and 6. <clears throat> okay, so now we're executing G0 of 1 and 6. And what's the first thing we're going to ask? Is 1 equivalent to 0? Well, it is not. So we will not execute the first clause, rather, we'll execute the second clause. But the second clause is a recursive call to G0. So MATLAB says, oh, you'd like for me to do G0 of what arguments? 0 and 6. Uh, yeah, 6. Because 1 times 6 is 6. Uh, MATLAB analyzes the contents of function G0 and determines that there is one output variable and two input variables. So it makes a table with three columns. K, N, and M. Of these three variables, the inputs are known, N and M, and their values are 0 and 6, respectively. So now we're evaluating G0 of 0 and 6. And what's the first thing we're going to ask? Is 0 equivalent to 0? Ah, it is, isn't it? So as a result, what? We'll execute this clause. And we'll say that the output k uh, is assigned the value of the second input. So uh, that means that k is now 6, 0, and 6. So the state of the g0 function uh, for input 0 and 6 is now this. What occurs now? Now we start, pu now we start returning to the caller. Right? No one has gotten back to anyone yet. Right? This is like a game of telephone where you know, someone says, blah, blah, and then it goes down the line 
a million places and then people start turning around and responding. No one's responded yet. Here's the first response. So, uh, as a result of this, where is the response of this function going to go? It goes to k, right? So it goes, it goes right here. Boom. So this is 6. Okay, now this one is finished. And where does this k go? To the previous caller's k. Six. Now this one is finished. And where does this k go? To the previous caller's k. Six. Now this one is finished. Where does this k go? So who called G0 of 3 and 1? G of 3 called it. So this is 6. And then who asked for G of 3? The person at the console, right? So what, after all of this work, what does MATLAB do? <laughs> it finally says A and S equal 6. Is it the case? that 3 factorial is 6? Yes. It is. So now, the, what I want you to look at, so this again is a call stack, but uh, the, first, the first method kind of had this zigzaggy business. Okay, and notice that when, when did we determine the value of the output? We determined it in the last frame in the last table. That's where it was determined. The answer is 6. And all of the tables, all that they did is they just turned around and said, it's 6, it's 6, it's 6, it's 6. They all just, they, there was nothing to do except say, it's 6. All of them were just proclaiming it's 6 all the way. Whereas in this style, when did we determine that the answer is 6? At the very end. The very end. OK. So what, what we're going to do, among other things, is that we're going to implement some functions that do it in this style. You're going to have to do one in this style, and you're going to have to do one in that style. So probably we won't do uh, factorial, right? Because I just wrote them on the page. What would be the point of that? So we'll do something slightly different, but honestly, it's exactly the same. So, uh, so there's a nice story about a famous mathematician called Gauss. You've probably heard of him. And here's a story. It's apocryphal, I think. I, it's not true, I think. But at any rate, it's a story that mathematicians tell their children for bedtime. Uh, it goes like this. That Gauss was a very good mathematician, but he was not well behaved as a child. Uh, and he was extremely smart, and one time he was giving his, his teacher a hard time, uh, and he was, you know, just a little kid. And the teacher said, Mr. Gauss, listen, I just need you, I just need you to uh, just be quiet for a little bit, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to add up all the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to a hundred, and just get back to me when you're done. And the, and the teacher thought, oh, this will occupy him for a little bit. And after a few moments thought, he says, 5,050, <laughs> right? You know, and then you can imagine the teacher's just pulling her hair out because that's the right answer. Okay, so then adding up the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., uh, that's, that's a, a thing. It's called the Gauss function for the reason that we just talked about. But it's also called the pyramid function. Uh, because I have a question. So here's a pyramid uh, with, with height zero. How many, how many balls are in that pyramid? 
Zero, right? Okay, here's a pyramid with height one. How many balls are in that pyramid? One. Here's a pyramid with height two. And so now you can see what I mean by pyramid. We're making a stack like that. We're stacking them up. So how many are in there? Okay, then now I have to have three as the base. So this pyramid has height three. And how many uh, balls are in there? Not four. Six, right? And what I want you to notice is that the next pyramid, what, what, is, the, what is the size of the base? Four, right? So we'd have four red balls. And then, yes, on top of it would be the previous pyramid, right? So I can just copy the previous pyramid and put it right here. And so, do you, do you observe that the answer to the number of balls in the pyramid of height 4 is 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is the Gauss uh, function? So this one would be 10. So we're going to do this uh, for the next programming assignment in the two styles that we talked about today. Okay, so have a nice Thursday. <clears throat>